Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli with Aperture, formerly Funker Martial Arts, and we're gonna talk about some mount escapes today. This is a really tricky situation to get into, and there's lots of different ways that you can be stuck underneath a mount. So I wanna look at some that are maybe not just kind of the standard ways that we can get stuck in the mount, but maybe some special conditions that you might have some trouble with of how this guy can, can configure his body in a way that really uh, kind of stifles the this, this standard kind of escapes. So the first one, uh, we'll start out kind of basic, and whenever I'm here and Mitch has got the mount on top of me like this, let's say that like when he first gets here and his hands are on the floor and I have the opportunity to capture, then I can do something as simple as come up here, gable grip, trap like this, and then adjust my hands for this two on one where I'm on the wrist and the elbow, trap the foot on the same side, and then I'm a bridge, arch up like this, and then we roll over and then we're into a guard passing now. Uh, I'm not going to do all that, we'll cover guard passing in a different one. My main focus for this is just to get out of the mount position. So, so that's good if uh, you know I can catch him while his hands are still down here and doing this. However, sometimes when we get here and I'm starting to go for this, he's, he's being a little uh, tentative with his hands and he's kind of pulling his hands away like this. So uh, I, I want to try to get him to put his hands back on the mat. Maybe I can bridge here and get him to do that and then go back, but if he's really doing a good job of consistently pulling his hands off the mat, maybe I want to trace it back here. So what happened is whenever he hit and he goes to pull his hand back, I'm following it and then I'm going to stuff it here low on his abdomen like this. I want to trap the foot here and then again, same thing, I'm going to look the direction that I'm going to go, arch my hips up here, retract the head, sit, come up, and then I'm going back into passing again. Okay, so that's another condition that we might find ourselves in, right? Now, what happens sometimes if I do wind up getting this grip and he feels I've trapped this, I've trapped this over here and now he knows, okay, I'm, he's, he's very vulnerable to fall this side. Sometimes he'll intentionally put his weight on this side here so that I can't take him this direction. So whichever way he shifts the weight, I know he's making the other side light so I want to take advantage of that. So I'm going to shrimp my hips toward the side where he's light this way and insert my bottom leg, top leg is going to come around to the hip like this. Now, from here, maybe I can go in and start attacking for the footlock. My uh, preference here, most of the time, if I can keep this foot floating, is to scoop it up this way, get it up here like this. I'm gonna do a technical stand up here, and then I'm just gonna run it down, and then we've got a built-in pass from here. Right? Once again, on this one, is if I can get a hold of this here and get this pinned against him, and then I start to trap because I want to take him this way, but he shifts the weight over to the side. So then I'm going to bridge a little bit, shrimp my hips out toward the side where he's light, this side here. Insert the bottom knee, top foot comes around, push to make the space, get the foot light here, scoop up on the leg here, and then look at the base, get up, technical stand up, and then run forward here. Maybe I can get the pass right off of it. At least I got him off the top of me, right? Now, next. Maybe he's not vertical at all. Whenever the, the energy that I want that tells me that it's right to trap and roll is if he's high and tight. If his legs are in tight, if he's more of a vertical posture. Now, if he's low and wide, the trap and roll is not the name of the game anymore. So if he's here and his feet are back, right? <clears throat> so the, the condition we're gonna talk about right now is what about grapevines? Sometimes this guy likes to grapevine like this. Yeah, this, is, this can be bad if you don't know how to deal with the situation. If you don't know how to deal with it, it's not too bad. Because from here, I'm going to take one leg, and I'm just going to push through my heel to kill the grapevine on one side. And once that one's released, I'm going to step on the other one here, pick that leg up, put it on top of my own foot. Both feet come off together like that. And then I turn to the side where that just happened, and I finish with an elbow escape like this. Then I can turn, finish, and replace the guard. So again, He's here, he's great on my legs. If I stay here, it's gonna be very uncomfortable. I wanna kick, push through here from the heel, step on his leg, put my foot on my own, uh, my leg on my own foot here, hop both legs off at the same time, and then finish my elbow escape like this. I can either go here to half guard, or I can finish out. If he gives me the energy and space, I can go all the way back to the guard from here. Another version similar to that is whenever this guy is, uh, you know, he, he feels something or maybe he just has a, the predilection here to go and cross his ankles instead. Yeah, this is different from the grapevines because I can't get my feet inside now, right? 
So if I can't get my feet inside, I can't elbow escape, I can't trap and roll. It's not right for either of those situations. So I'm gonna take my hands, if he's got pants on, I'm gonna grab his pants, I hope he has pants on. And then from here, I'm gonna bridge here and I'm gonna kick my, my feet straight up in the air, insert both legs, push them out, and then we're gonna be back here in like kind of a butterfly guard position. <clears throat> what that looks like without him on top of me is kind of like if I was lying down on the bed or lying down on the floor and trying to take my pants off. I can't do it this way. I have to lift my legs up that way here. So whenever he's here, and a great example of this is a, a UFC a while, a while back, Martin Kempman versus Jake Shields. This was a, a, a really good move by Martin Kempman whenever Jake Shields liked this kind of mount here. And so he would uh, get here, he would push up on the hips and he would stick the legs straight up in the air, bring the legs inside, and then be back here in this kind of butterfly position. So that's another good one. Now, um, notice all of these, all of these are kind of contingent on me doing something good in the beginning of this, which is keeping my elbows down on the inside, which is what I want to do almost every time that I'm mounting. This is, this is usually always a good idea. So um, if though he's able to get his knees in my armpits, my bridge is not effective any longer. So this is a problem for me. If he gets under my armpits, I want to try to scoop back out to get my elbows back in. But if he's being very stubborn about it, I'm going to have to find a different way out. So I'm going to take my hands, C-clamp like this, put them in his armpits. I'm going to bridge here while I extend my arms out. It sounds like a bad idea. Just listen to me. I go here, and then I'm going to replace my hands with my feet this way. And I'm going to keep pushing with my hands. Well, up the back like this with any luck. I catch a foot on the way out, and then I can attack it. I don't want to get too greedy as long as I get him off of me that I'm doing good. So again, people will in in instinctively try this a lot of times whenever they don't know a whole lot and they'll try to come here and wrap the feet around like this. This is a horrible idea. This can go wrong in a lot of ways. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing here is I'm going into the armpits like this, bridging, pushing up like this here, and then immediately bringing my feet to replace my hands so my hands can go down here and push on his torso or his pants or his hips roll over my shoulder, come out the back door, and then go here, maybe hang on to this foot. Even if uh, I don't get the foot lock, if he wants to twist and roll the face, then I still wind up in a good position afterwards. So, man, there's a lot of other ways that I can escape, and I don't wanna say that these are all options that I can do from the exact same position because I don't believe in that. I think that whenever the position changes, I'm gonna have to change a little detail here or there. I don't wanna try to retrofit and for something that's not optimal for the situation. But I think these are some difficult situations and these are some really good escapes that get me out of a lot of trouble. So give these a try guys, I hope you like them. Keep watching the Night Jiu Jitsu channel on YouTube. Check out Aperture and I uh, hope you like it.